Are you newsjacking yet? Now, leveraging trending news for press attention is the hot social media trend sweeping the nation in 2019, and all the cool entrepreneurs are doing it. Now, this video is sponsored by Learn From Fiverr, the first 50 people to use the coupon code LEARNMORE20 will get 20% off their first course. Just hit the link in the description below. Now, I'm Josh Elledge, and I've been in the media more than 2,000 times. I teach business owners and executives how to grow your influence and authority so that you can grow your revenue. And when you subscribe to this channel, you can rest assured that my videos are going to help you connect with influencers and media while you build your audience and your success. Now, mega props to David Meerman Scott for originally coining the term newsjacking. It's an excellent word. I've been teaching on this subject for over a decade, and I'd really like to dig in on why social media, particularly Twitter, is such a critical step to getting press coverage through newsjacking. Now, it's not enough to just produce content. It's all about connection. Now, some people hope that they can just write a blog article on a trending topic, and they'll automatically go viral. It takes a little bit more than that, in my experience. Now, in this video, I'll reveal some pitches that would work well. And again, we're going to be talking Twitter. Why? Because like 99% of media folks I know actively use Twitter. It's just a very immediate newsy platform. It's generally more business related than say a reporter's personal Facebook or Instagram account. And it's generally a great place to get a quick response. Now, even if you're not a Twitter person, you may have set up your Twitter profile three years ago, then promptly forgot the password, which can happen if you don't really get Twitter. It happens a lot, I get it. I will say, that this part is very critical. Your profile slash branding, your follower count, and your engagement really matter. I talk about this a lot. If your indicators of authority are missing or you just look like an amateur, you're not going to get very far. Look, I could sugarcoat this for you, but we all prejudge folks online based on their perceived authority and branding. Reporters are going to be hyper selective on who they engage with. So you should put some real effort into communicating your expertise. Want some more evidence about why this matters? Consider internet dating, for example. Now, if your profile image and bio are just not that great, People are going to swipe left before they can even get to know you. Now, subscribe to my YouTube channel and watch some of my videos on this subject, particularly the profile image video. Science and psychology agree. A great photo will open up more opportunities for you. Let's get back to Twitter. You don't need to have a billion followers to have a social media presence that gets press attention. However, an account that has a thousand followers will generally get a few more seconds of evaluation than someone with under a hundred. Those extra few seconds can really matter when you're wanting someone to consider you. All this said, I don't want you to not reach out if your account is newer. Just Clean it up and know that as you grow, it gets easier. So assuming that your profile is good to go, let's talk about how to pitch the media in 2019 and beyond using newsjacking on Twitter. Now with these few simple steps, you can easily begin using current events, hot topics, and trending news to get the attention of journalists on Twitter. First, identify relevant folks on social media. Figure out which journalists or news outlets are relevant to you, your business, and your vision. Now, this seems really obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people just don't do this right. You might really love reading Modern Unicycle Monthly, but if you sell luxury cat condos for the discerning house cat, well, the steampunk journalists at MUM, yeah, they should not be your first targets. You laugh, but it happens. I'm a syndicated consumer columnist and TV host, and I get irrelevant pitches almost every day. You wouldn't believe the crap I get from legit 
PR firms who are charging their clients big money, which kind of pisses me off. Now, once you've made your list, find the journalist's preferred social media outlets. The vast majority of traditional journalists, like I said, use Twitter as their preferred communications platform, but many could also be active on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook if you find their page, their Facebook page, not their personal profile. Leave them alone there. All right, now after you've pinpointed the proper social media channel, make sure your own profile, like I talked about, is looking good. Then let the games begin. Think of this process as like online dating, but with fewer photos of shirtless dudes in Oakley sunglasses petting tigers. Now, it's for real. I mean, I don't know personally, but I've been told. Now reach out to relevant journalists by following them and interacting with their posts. Now this helps set up the foundation for a working relationship. Be helpful, toss out story ideas, and whatever you do, do not promote yourself or your business. Now you can make just about any mistakes with the press and live to tell the tale, but being self-promoting out of the gate will get you no second chances. Clear? The marketer in you is probably going to be saying, well, Josh, what's the point if I can't get promoted? Listen, you will likely get credited very fairly. But here's the thing, if you want this to work, you can't ask for it. Now, if you ask to be promoted, it's not going to happen. Most journalists are professionals and know how to source their experts. Just give them the space to credit you. Now, when you list your demands for follow links and all that other junk, it just makes everything really awkward. And quite frankly, they don't need you as much as you need them. So play this game well and you can be rewarded. Second, consistently follow trending topics. A trending news happens quickly and it can become old news just as fast. Remember the old saying, yesterday's news is old news? Well, now it's 10 minute ago's news is no news at all. So you need to be consistently browsing news sites or trending hashtags on social media, particularly within your own industry. Now, if you don't have the time to do this yourself, I get it. Assign somebody on your team to stay on top of it. That makes them, that's their job. That way you can become aware of trending stories and topics as soon as they break. Now, in 2011, Kate Winslet rescued Richard Branson's elderly mother from a fire for real, and the London Fire Brigade jumped at the chance to comment on it on social media. Now, in a Facebook post, they offered to give Kate Winslet firefighter training as a reward for her good deed. The post was timely and served the purpose of the London Fire Brigade to educate others about fire safety. In other words, when the news breaks that there's been a recall of cat condos made of carpet and your condo is made of environmentally friendly recycled astroturf, you should be ready to go within minutes with all the facts journalists need to know about the different quality cat condo materials and how they affect pet health. Third, Plan and share content that leverages trending news stories. Now, once you've got a trending topic that fits well in your business, plan content around that story. It can be a blog post, a YouTube video, or even just a photo or graphic. Create the content quickly so that you can be one of the first to post about it. Don't worry about perfection. We're aiming for somewhere between serviceable and pretty darn good. Just get it out there quick. Now, when trending topics hit, journalists are scrambling for relevant content so that they can gather more information to share with their audiences. By being one of the first to post, you are serving the media by giving them good content to use. They serve you in turn by giving you good press. It's symbiosis. Help your content be found by using relevant keywords and trending hashtags. And of course, also, as we talked about earlier, proactively reach out to the journalists that are gonna care about this and offer it to them. Simple enough? Now, Charmin took advantage of the 2013 Academy Awards to tweet a staged photo of a woman walking on stage to accept an award with a piece of toilet paper stuck under her dress. They captioned it with a caution to the nominees. Don't forget to look down before your speech. 
Now, the company planned in advance to send this tweet while the topic of the Oscars was trending, and it paid off. Fourth, and this is so important, be tactful. Sometimes trending news stories deal with tragedies or other sensitive topics. This is a minefield, and trying to leverage these topics for business and press is not only distasteful, but can also backfire and give your business negative press. Just take it from Kenneth Cole, who, during the debate about U.S. involvement in Syria, tweeted, Boots on the ground or not, let's not forget about sandals, pumps, and loafers. Hashtag footwear. No. Just no. Rule of thumb. If you've got some really clever and catchy tie into a national tragedy, act of nature or act of war, uh, just write it in your journal and just keep on moving. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't deal with serious and hard-hitting topics and stories, though. Sometimes it's helpful to lend your voice to a serious topic and journalists and audiences alike will appreciate your perspective. Just don't try to be overly cutesy when it comes to tragedy. Duh. Now, another good rule of thumb to follow is this. Make sure you're adding value to the story and genuinely serving those affected by it rather than just trying to get press. Now, a while back, Burger King used their social media platforms to add to the conversation about net neutrality. While the net neutrality repeal can't be classed as a tragedy, it is a serious topic that many people feel passionate about. Now, Burger King created a video that explained net neutrality using the chain's famous Whopper Burger as an analogy. The video was educational and a little funny, and it got coverage from most of the major news outlets. Burger King has also done some really effective content around bullying. Go Burger King. Okay, now finally, reach out to media, as we've been talking about. Once your content is crafted and shared, you don't want to just sit back and wait for journalists to discover you. That's a really weak strategy. So let's get a little more perspective, shall we? After all, you just spend anywhere from five minutes to two hours developing content. So reach out to reporters on their social media profiles to let them know that you have content that can help their developing news stories. Now, don't pester them, but make sure they're aware of what you can offer. Now, this is especially successful when you have already established a relationship with the press through social media. Now, in closing, let me just say that when you're trying to get press for your business, it can sometimes feel like an uphill battle to get other people to notice what you can offer. Now, you may wonder why everyone in the world isn't instantly recognizing your brilliance, but it doesn't have to be that way. When trending topics hit, journalists are already actively searching for content to add to their reports. All you have to do is meet them halfway with high quality, relevant content. So let's review. Number one, be helpful. Number two, focus on serving journalists and their audiences. And number three, finally, try not to promote yourself even though you totally are in a roundabout way. So there you have it. And let me tell you, newsjacking works. We newsjack on behalf of our clients at Up My Influence, and we can generally get some pretty great placements for them. Now, if this video was helpful, comment below with a link to your Twitter account so we can connect. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at Josh Elledge. Now, I give you permission to promote your Twitter account below. Let's help one another. Also, if you got any new ideas or insights, give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that my team and I have done our job. I can also tell you that there are likely some really big things I missed in this video and stuff that you might disagree with. That's cool. I need to know what you know, and I can use that for all the videos that we have planned for the next 30 days. Let me know in the comments below. Also, if I shared something and you're scratching your head saying, wait, uh, what? Post that question below. I promise I will answer everything. Now, the highest compliment you could offer would be to share this video with a friend who you know would benefit from hearing what I have to say. I promise to make you look smart to your social media friends. I'd also be honored if you hit subscribe. Now, you can always unsubscribe if, boy, my voice, voice just went cracked like a couple octaves there. I feel like Peter Brady. It's time to change. Don't fight the tide, come along for the ride. 
Now you can always unsubscribe if you don't like the value I share in my videos, but if we part ways without a subscription, you won't see what I have lined up in the weeks ahead, and I promise to work tirelessly to help you grow your authority, your influence, and your revenue. And do you need some extra help with the topics I covered in today's video? If so, I suggest you head on over to Learn from Fiverr, the first 50 people to use the coupon code LEARNMORE20 will get 20% off their first course. Just hit the link in the description below. Now, you may have heard of Fiverr before as a place that you can go to get awesome designs, create Facebook ad strategies, write your articles, etc. But did you also know that you could take online courses from Fiverr? Learn from Fiverr is their new online education platform. You can take content strategy, for example, from my buddy Ian Cleary, which would be a great next step after watching this video. The courses are comprehensive. If you want to master a subject, they are actually a few hours long. But what I like is that each lesson is short, about five to seven minutes per video. So you could be an overachiever and go through the whole course in one day if you want. Now, this is what's cool about doing this in Fiverr. Once you complete the course, you'll earn a badge stating that you're proficient in that skill. This will give you a huge leg up if you sell on Fiverr. Now, Learn from Fiverr offers many courses for professionals and business owners like yourself. They offer courses in content, viral marketing, as well as courses such as SEO and storytelling. Again, all good stuff if you want to get the most out of newsjacking. Thank you so much to Learn From Fiverr for sponsoring this video. Again, the first 50 people to use the coupon code LEARNMORE20 will get 20% off their first course. Just hit the link in the description below. And don't forget, we have a great influencer and media authority agency you could check out at upmyinfluence.com where I have a free webinar, lots of free articles, tools, videos, two awesome podcasts. Make sure to subscribe to The Thoughtful Entrepreneur and Authority Confidential. Both are designed to help you grow your business. Now, of course, if you're at the point where you have some budget to increase growth and revenue in your business, we love that ROI. We have services specifically designed to connect you with influencers and grow your authority as a media celebrity yourself. Let's connect. Thank you so much for watching.